This is a performance update for the Trade Copier Service. Uh, today was non-farm payrolls. It is October 6th, Friday, 2023. So let's take a look at the S&P. Uh, I had two trades on the S&P. I'll walk you through them quickly. Uh, this is the one minute time frame. So when I find some particular pattern, as I mentioned in previous videos, if I find a pattern setting up on the larger time frames, then I'll drill down to the one minute chart to get my exact entry. So let me step back and we'll take a look at the daily chart. So the daily chart, uh, S&P, you can see that we've been sort of bouncing around here off of this lower Bollinger Band. That's obviously not what's creating all this, but <laughs> it's just sort of a guide, right? It's just a guide. It's just a tool. And it was um, looking like things were going to go sideways for a couple of days. Now, obviously, we had the beginning of the week. We started to melt down and start to move a lot lower. And then it started to go sideways. And then today was likely to be the day where we were going to see some big reversal. There was just that possibility. And I'll walk you through why I uh, expected that. It's just a basic pattern that repeats over and over again. If you do any study with the uh, weekly and the monthly and um, you know the, the daily timeframes, you'll notice that there's a pattern that repeats pretty often. I mean, uh, again, you can't just jump in and execute trades until you actually see the pattern but you're always prepared for it the night before what to expect the following day for the most part. So let's go down to the one minute chart. So the one minute chart here, we have the beginning of the week right over here. Uh, that purple line right there. Uh, that's Monday. And you'll notice what I have here highlighted is the first tick at the open, right? The opening price at the beginning of the week. I draw that line right there all the way through. That's the beginning. That's obviously going to have an impact on price at some point. It certainly could. And if it's going to be something like this, where it would be a, a week where we would see two, three days to the downside, and then maybe one day, which would be Wednesday or Thursday going sideways, and then Friday would be the move right back up to the uh, starting price. Now, a lot of you have probably recognized, if you haven't really done the study on it, you might want to go back and look at your weekly timeframes. One hour time frame is sufficient, you know, if you're going to be looking at it. But you might want to study this pattern and this behavior. Now, it doesn't mean that this happens every single week. It does not happen every single week. Like some weeks, you know, we might open up here and we'll close down here far away from the opening price. But if it's going to turn out to be a day like this, based on what we're looking at on the daily time frame here, and then what we see here as far as the weekly, um, some people will refer to it as a template because there are different types of templates. Again, some templates will return price all the way back to the opening range from Monday, and they'll do that on a Friday. And other times it'll just continue and it'll trend. It really depends on what's going on in the bigger time frame. But this was relatively uh, obvious and easy to see. So here's non-farm payrolls. At this point on Thursday, you can see I'm sort of marking off these pivots, the more significant pivots that I can find here on the one hour time frame. And then obviously Thursday was sort of consolidation. It doesn't mean that there isn't any trades. I made a video yesterday on yesterday's trades, but it's not likely to produce this kind of opportunity. This opportunity, if they're going to bring price all the way back to the opening range, well, it's going to have to stage quite a reaction, right? And the reaction would be after non-farm payrolls. So that was relatively easy to just kind of sit and wait for the actual um, opportunity. So you can see here prior to non-farm payrolls, they started to drive it up before the uh, the uh, New York session started, you can see price was starting to drive right back up to, that's Wednesday, Thursday, that resistance level. One, two, three, they started to hit it again. Here they hit it one other time. So there's actually one, two, three, four, five times that they went back up to that same level. All right, so at that point, it would have been relatively safe to short prior to non-farm payrolls, but a lot of people don't want to do that because there's a possibility that they could put a wick right into the opposite direction and then it might skip right over your stop loss, whatever. Like there's a lot of things that can happen. So you want to trade safely and carefully. Now I did mention in yesterday's video that I would probably wait until after non-farm payrolls, which is exactly what I did. And there was one minute bar that just kind of wiped out all of this volume over here, all this activity and just kind of clamped down on all of it. So I just waited. Now let's go down to the one minute chart. So here's that activity after non-farm payrolls. I just kind of waited for it to bottom out and I expected that it was probably going to bottom out at some point and waited to show what, what is it that I'm looking for? So I'm looking for a reversal. A lot of times when people see this, and I remember going through this myself, when I would see a news event like this, where it would move down, you know, 50 pips, 54 X pips or 84 X pips, or, um, you know, let's say 50, you know, points or 30 points here on the S and P 
that's a really dramatic move. And in a lot of, a lot of cases, you're not, you're not thinking that it's going to go all the way back up here. But again, looking at the bigger time frames, it was likely that it was going to produce that kind of an opportunity and it wasn't going to go down any lower. Now this green line right here, there are some really important levels that nobody can argue with, right? As traders, we're always looking for the high and the low and then the close of each day. And this was yesterday's close. So initially when I got this squeeze play right down here and you can see it happening here on the one minute time frame you can see this whole this whole squeeze lining up um setting up for a possible bull move to the upside and the first target was going to be the close of the previous day which was thursday's close so here was my entry so what i did was watched like you get a couple of patterns right here that look kind of bullish some people would buy on that, but that's not enough. That's not a strength signal to me. That's not a strength signal. That's not a strength signal. And this is too early in the beginning of this squeeze play that I'm looking for. So right here is where you can see it taking place. We get one, two, three, four, five, six minutes. And then that one final minute right there just sort of locks in everything. And that's where I saw the sign of strength right here. And then that more or less completed this squeeze play right here, which is a reversal. It, you know, it starts to move down in the direction that you think it's headed in, but it's going to produce an opportunity to trade a reversal. So the next thing I need to do was wait for the testing. This was not enough testing. This just creates the squeeze play. It looks like testing of support, but to me, it's not. The way I interpret this is that it's just creating that that channel, that squeeze, that slow creeping move to the downside, and then you get that explosive move, which then confirms that it's done. And the other thing that you want to pay attention to are these bars. So a lot of times people will look at bars and they see the candlestick patterns, but they're not reading enough of the detail. So what you'll notice here is that it's very easy for people to sell here in the direction of what they all saw. We all saw this, right? After non-farm payrolls, we're all thinking, okay, we'll just sell it. And let's take a look at that. So anybody that sold it on these pullbacks was probably making money it was pretty easy for them to make money and anybody that was trying to buy this bounce down here was probably making a little bit but if they didn't grab the profits they were easily wiped right back out again and they would they were forced to have to buy to try and buy at lower levels which makes it more and more difficult and it's not as profitable as people who are selling so i was watching who was winning here sellers are easily making money and buyers even though they're putting up a good fight are making it it's more and more difficult for them to make any money until this spot right here that was the moment that i was looking for and that point at that point then i start looking for the test i don't think that this is enough testing because i don't see anybody winning here other than selling here is where it stops and then i look for the testing and here's the testing and the confirmation of that test you notice that really none of these other bars except for this bull bar right there that's my hammer that's my signal right there and that's my buy and it's really easy at that point to put a stop right here i didn't expect i mean i expected that even if i expected another test here that i could move it maybe adjust it but i wasn't thinking i was going to have to do that at this point and notice how much time had passed from non-farm payrolls here's non-farm payrolls right there at 5 30 in the morning or that's california time 8 30 i'm sorry uh, new york time and then over here at this point that's almost two hours later so we've got the 15 30 bar and over here, we've got the 17, almost 17, 20. So that's almost two hours later. So a lot of time has passed, a lot of going back and forth. This is where I knew it was ready to go. And again, the first target, well, it might be resistance here. That's probably something to consider. But I knew more or less that it was probably going to go up to yesterday's uh, closing price. And then if it was going to go up to yesterday's closing price, what next? Then I go back to my one hour chart and I see that this was the opening range. You'll also notice this gray area right here. This is the first eight hours of the first opening range that more or less creates uh, a pocket of resistance. Sometimes it'll stall. You can see it kind of goes right up to that point right there and it looks like it's not gonna go any further. It, it That pullback right there didn't look like it was gonna stop it. So it looked like it was probably getting ready one more time to make another rush right back up into that high. So the first, the next level would be obviously the bottom of this range. The next level would be the opening price, which it cleared. And then of course, the high of that first eight hour range right there. And then it kind of cleared the whole thing and stayed there. So it was relatively easy once we got the reversal to see this thing continue to move higher and higher and higher and to hold on to that trade. So two trades, this was the first trade. And here 
move that over. There was my target when it, st when it started to top out right there. And then I waited for the same basic pattern to develop again. You'll notice this squeeze, this sort of uh, flag that starts to uh, form. At this point, it's also at the previous day's low uh, or the previous day's closing price, I'm sorry. So it looks like a possible sell opportunity. You can see them sort of going back and forth again, almost the same scenario right here. So again, I'm looking for a re-entry and here is that break. There's where it pulls back and goes sideways. All I did was bought on the pullback. I knew that this thing was likely to continue to go higher. At this level, let's take a look at this level right here. That level right there is 42.50. Let's take a look at the one hour chart. 42.50 is right down here 4250 again the previous day's close right there that was thursday's close so i knew if we were going right back up to this level from the beginning of the week we had a long ways to go so it was a relatively easy low risk trade i was able to get in right here and you can see from the time i got in the trade very little heat it just kind of took off and then it continued and I took it right up to that level right up here where is that that's about where I was comfortable um, taking the profits. This was a 30 point trade and this was a 20 uh, this was a 23 point trade right here. The first trade. So that's S and P points like 23 and 30. That that's pretty big. Again, that doesn't happen every day. It certainly does not happen every day. We can go to the one hour time frame, and you can see you know, you can probably make that many points over the course of the day, but you're scalping a lot on a day like this. You got to be careful. And again, this was the type of setup that was going to likely produce this kind of an opportunity in this reversal. Again, when you step back and you look at the daily time frame, and then you look at the one hour time frame, you can see the whole setup, just how it was. Man, this was just picture perfect. This was just one of those great opportunities. Again, this does not happen every day. And this is not a guarantee that I'm going to be able to find trades that are going to produce these kind of opportunities every single day. But I do my best and it's relatively easy and it's it's just all about patience. It's all about waiting for the setup. And even on the uh, re-entry, the re-entry itself is also a very particular setup. It's got to look the right way. I don't just jump in just because I see a bull bar. That's not what I was doing here. There has to be a particular setup that leads to this move, which is very similar to what I saw right here. So there are two different uh, re-entry uh, setups that you see on this one minute time frame for this particular move to the upside. So again, 23 points on the first half, uh, first trade, 30 points on the second trade. I did have a subscriber that sent me a message that he was able to earn over 16%. Now, again, you have control if you use the trade copier to copy my trades so that you can determine whether you make 1%, 2%, 3%, 16%. Like that's exposing, you know, you got to really have a lot of faith in the system. But again, it can be done. I'm not saying that everybody should do it, but you should be well aware of what your lot size and what your risk is, uh, the leverage that you're willing to use. Make sure that you really got that dialed in before you start using, you know, a signal service or you start adding on size on a trade. But again, the, this represents most of my trades. Most of my trades are very calculated just like this. I don't, I don't jump in. Like, I don't want a half and half kind of trade. Like, if I'm going to look at it and say, well, you know, I'm not really too sure about this trade, then I'm just going to leave it alone. There's always going to be the trade where I look at it and I go, that is my trade right there. That's the one I'm looking for. Sometimes I get one of them. Sometimes I get two of them. Sometimes I get three of them a day. It depends. Every day is a little bit different. I hope you traded well. If you want to use the trade copier to copy my trades, you can uh, click the description, click, click the link in the description. It'll send you to my subscription page. And then uh, you just download the trade copier. Once you sign up, we send you a link. You watch a video on how to install it. You connect it to your MT4 account and um, you, you can add as many MT4 accounts as you want, up to five uh, with the trade copier right now.